Welcome to Honest News. Joel Osteen has uh, just recently shared a message with his listeners, with his followers, uh, about withstanding. Uh, God built you to withstand the pressure. God built you. He put within you uh, the beams, and he went on using this analogy, and he even said that God put within you the foundation, but he never mentioned Jesus. Not one word about Jesus being the foundation. You tell me how a real minister of the gospel would not associate the foundation with Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. I believe we are in the last of the last days. I think you would agree with me, you that are believers. Amen. You that actually believe the scriptures. Amen. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why do you say in the Lord? Because the Lord doesn't want children obeying their parents to do against his word. Amen. You think Jesus wants children to obey their parents? They want them, their children to do things that are evil and wicked? Unruly? Lawless? No, it says in the Lord. And how many parents today are in the Lord. How many? How many are really in the Lord that are led by the Holy Spirit that don't lean to their own understanding? How many parents are in the Lord? That's a message in itself right there. Paul says, this is right to obey your parents In the Lord. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. How important is it to honor your mother and your father? that thou may livest a long life on the earth, right? With promise. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So you're not supposed to be provoking your children to become rebellious and stubborn in society right You're not supposed to be raising your children to be bullies amen servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh talking about your job obedient to your bosses your masters This is talking about slavery here. I may know that. It was allowed back then. And Paul says, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters. Now, they may not be a slave anymore. They may may be like Eliezer, where in the Old Testament, when a slave uh, was, came to the 50 years and he was allowed to leave the home and, He was no longer 
a slave in that home. He could leave the home or he could stay willingly and be a servant to that family. That's what Eliezer did. He became part of the family. He became so honorable that Abraham sent him to get a bride for Isaac. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so Paul is saying, servants, obey them that are your masters according to the flesh. With fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Now notice the next verse. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Amen. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. He's dealing with rebellion in the hearts of servants or slaves, if you will. But he doesn't stay there. He doesn't just give a word just to the slaves or the servants. Listen to what he says to the masters over the slaves. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. So he's talking about slavery here. And he's also talking about those that are no longer slaves. They're servants. Whatever capacity you serve in, be obedient, not as men pleasers, but as unto the Lord. Notice what Paul says to the masters. Does God allow abuse? Like during the Civil War? What was going on in this country? And you masters, do the same things unto them. Forbearing, threatening. Hmm. Forbearing, threatening. You're not even supposed to threaten a servant. Or a slave. Knowing that your master. Also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. So God's dealing with not just the servants and the slaves. He's dealing with the masters over the servants and slaves. How they're all supposed to be conducting themselves. God does not condone abuse, ever. Give a moment for that to sink in. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. How are you going to be strong in the Lord? In the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, Mr. Osteen, if you're going to give a message about withstanding, don't you think you ought to use this verse? Instead of your humanistic, positive thinking approach. 
Never once did he mention this verse. This is the verse the people need. Notice the setting of these verses are with the family. Dealing with family life. Mr. Osteen, this is dealing with children obeying their parents. This is dealing with parents and the way they're supposed to raise their children and not provoke their children through hypocrisy. Amen. This is dealing with servants and slaves and masters. Life. The real world. Don't you think withstand had something to do with this verse, Mr. Osteen? Never told the people anything about the armor of God. Never mentioned to the people to be strong in the power of the Lord's might. Never told them about the strength of God. Simply told them, God built you. Whether you're saved or not saved, God built you. He knows what he put in you. He's talking to people that are not even saved, but then he's talking to those that are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, it tickled their ears, made them feel good. Gave them goosebumps. But it's not going to keep them in the evil day. The evil day is here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, once again for the truth. The Holy Scripture. We thank you, God, for the gift of the Holy Ghost that you've given to us that you sent down to this world for us to be filled with Holy Spirit of truth, to walk, to live, to have our being in the Spirit, to live and to walk in the Spirit. That is our armor, Lord, dressed in the full armor of God, walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Pray, Lord, you bless this word as we minister your word. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hallelujah. I believe I shared more truth with you in the introduction than Joel Osteen does in a whole hour's message. Amen. It's the truth. He never mentioned to the people anything about Jesus. He kept referring to God, but he never said anything about Jesus. Even when he mentioned that within every one of you, he says, is a foundation. He says it can handle the pressure. But he never said the foundation is Jesus. And Paul the Apostle said, no foundation can be laid that is already laid which is Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. There's only one foundation. This reminds me, in the Old Testament, they they said to the people, peace, peace, when there was no peace. False prophets. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. We're dealing with a bunch of liars today. Lying to the people. Deceiving the people. Deceived and being deceived. They're not preparing the people for the evil day. I trust you that have been listening to this ministry. You're getting ready. You're preparing. We're running out of time, people. The evil day is upon us, and it's going to get much worse. You better make sure that you're not just saved. You better make sure you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Because if you're not, 
you don't have the armor. You don't have the armor. You won't be able to even deal with just family life. You won't be able to deal with your children. You won't be able to deal with your boss at the job. I'm telling you people, we got to walk in the spirit, live in the spirit. Or we will fulfill the lust of our flesh, which is envy. When you have somebody that's envying their boss's position, that's not good. Oh, I can do the job better. That's not good. Amen. Those little seeds of bitterness begin to get in there. And you say, I can handle it. I can handle it. What happens when those seeds grow up to be roots of bitterness? And then what happens when that root turns into a tree? What happens when that tree turns into a forest and you become overrun with bitterness for your boss, for your master? Amen. Some folks have become bitter towards their master in heaven. Amen. You know, folks think they can handle it. I can handle it. I can handle these negative thoughts. I can handle these thoughts the devil's throwing at me, these fiery darts. According to Paul the Apostle, he said, the only thing that can handle those fiery darts is the shield of faith. You got to walk by faith. I'm going to say this to you, brothers and sisters. You don't stand a chance if you're not dressed in the armor of God. You don't stand a chance. If you're not walking in the spirit in this hour, you do not stand a chance. You won't make it. You're fooling yourselves. You that have believed on the Lord Jesus, you say your sins have been washed away, but you've never been filled with the precious Holy Ghost. You are not going to be able to stand. It's not an option, people. We need the Holy Ghost. We can't stand without the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. Jesus could not stand without the Holy Ghost. You say, well, Brother Joseph, he's God. He's the Son of God. Yeah, but he laid aside his glory. He laid aside his power. He laid it all aside and become as a man. And he depended on the Holy Ghost. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. And that's what you and I must do. Depend on the Holy Ghost. Walk in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Have our being in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. It's not an option, people. It's not an option. If you live in the flesh, you will die. You live after the flesh, you will die. Paul made that very clear. But if you mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. We are to live in the Spirit and after the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. The Lord has prepared for us armor that we might be warriors on this earth in the evil day. Soldiers of the cross. Amen. If somebody says something to you and it gets you to fly off the handle, you're not walking in the armor. Amen. You get offended at the smallest little things, you're not walking in the armor. That doesn't mean you're not going to get angry. The Bible says be angry and sin not. Even Jesus was angry. Looked upon the Pharisees with anger, with fire in his eyes. Amen. Glory to God. He turned over some tables. 
cast out the money changers. Amen. But all of it was done in the Spirit. Everything Jesus did was in the Spirit. It was all perfect in the will of God, in righteousness. He was just. Amen. And when Jesus was rivaled, he didn't rival back. When they spit in his face, he didn't spit back. When they mocked him, he didn't mock back. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. He opened not his mouth. That is a man that is submitted to God. Submitted to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord, people. Are you sure you're ready to stand? You think you can handle it without God's strength, without God's power? You're deceiving yourselves. What happens when the Lord stops holding back the tide? What happens when the Lord's no longer holding back the gates of hell? You say, well, Brother Joseph, the Bible said the gates of hell should not prevail against the church. I'm not talking to the church. I'm talking to you that are not filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to be filled with the Spirit. This is not an option. You're going to be in trouble if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. If you don't have oil in your lamp, you're going to be in trouble. And if it's one thing to have oil in your lamp, it's a whole other thing to have oil in the vessel. Praise God. It's not enough just to be saved and born again, brothers and sisters. You need to go on and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, well, someday, Brother Joseph, you better hunger and thirst after righteousness. Stop putting it off. Amen. This is a warning. This is a warning. Paul the Apostle gave this warning over 2,000 years ago in the evil day. If you think you're going to be, be able to withstand on human strength, on human ability, on human talents, like Joel Steen says, through his Gnostic gospel, he thinks whatever he says out of his mouth is, is, is God. It just automatically appears out of nowhere because he said it. He loves the hand pats. Oh, yeah. He loves the praise of man. That's the epitome of Mr. Osteen. That's who he is. He loves the praise of men rather than the praise of God. That's who you think is going to lead you to heaven. You're in serious trouble. Maybe he'll pull over with his Ferrari. Dear God, you better wake up, people. You better wake up. The scripture makes it so clear about those like Joel Steen. They tickle the people's ears. They speak smooth things to them. That's why he can pack out a building with thousands of people. He said that Billy Graham was his hero. Why Billy Graham could pack out a stadium. Because he wasn't God's servant. Amen.
A real minister of the gospel is not going to be liked. Paul said, the more I love you, the more I'm not loved. I thank God for the faithful few. Amen. The faithful few. Praise his name. The Lord told me, he said, I'm going to support your ministry with the widow's might. But he told me. I'm going to support your ministry with the widow's might. And I thought, wow, well, that's not going to be a whole lot. But you know what? He multiplies. He blesses and he multiplies. But where are the faithful? Like the widow with her might. I don't have a lot to give, Brother Joseph, but I'm going to obey the Lord. I'm going to give it all. Amen. Well, I can't give it all, Brother Joseph. Because if I give it all, I don't have any for myself. If God told you to do it, you better do it. That's the difference. Why did this woman cast it all into the treasury? Doesn't say why she did it. But Jesus honored her. It was pleasing to the Lord. That's all that matters. Amen. That's all that matters. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus. Is all I need. He's all I need. He's all you need. 